I am the snake artist and my mission in life is to get people to appreciate art and wildlife. Starting the way I always start with a bit of pencil, I'm marking out some shapes here. This is sort of like the snout area, actually it's the lower jaw, this is the snout area here. And a big eye section, it's one of the features of this. And doing a bit of a half circle here, and under here and a bit under here. So those bottom two rounded bits are the bits of the jaw. Linking it down here, back of the neck and a bit of throat there. And one crest there and another crest back here. So this one's called the double crested basilisk lizard. Working out where that eye is going to be seems to have some nice eyebrows, eyelids, uh, which sort of almost draws your attention to the eye even more. In this lesson I'm going to be teaching you more about rendering than anything and we're going to be looking at easier ways of rendering scales. So I'm marking where the lips go because upper and bottom lips have larger scales, like many of the snake species. In fact, a lot of lizards are a bit like snake-like in their face. Except this guy's got all these attachments which are really cool, like a dinosaur. Okay, so what I'm doing here is working out where I'm going to put cross-hatching. I'm going to use cross-hatching for all of the scales. Certainly to mark out the pencil bits anyway just because it's easy. It's not 100% accurate. If, it's, if I wanted to go 100% accurate, I'd work out a sort of a brick pattern. But the brick patterns take a bit longer. This is just a quicker, easier way out and still has fairly pleasing results. Ah. The cross hatching is really conforming to the shape of the lizard and helping describe that a bit. Part of the trick of this is I'm going to put shading in certain areas which is going to hide some of the places where scales are so we don't have to stress too much about linking or blending in certain parts. And as you're going to see, I'm going to cheat a few bits here. And it's good for you to know those cheats. So now I'm going over, it has quite a few eyelids and uh, eye protection there. Like I say, it has to run flat out at times. And so if it's running past foliage, it would protect the eye. I think the uh, extra bits around the eye also gives it a little bit of mobility in the eye, so I can sort of look around a bit further. Here's another little bit of cross-hatching there. And cross-hatching here. Bits of shade. I won't cross-hatch too much here still important to leave white bits. Back of the head, they've got big heads on them. It's like they've got, I don't know, big brains or something. A bit of a dent there, which his ears probably hiding in there somewhere. I'll fast forward bits and stop when we get to the interesting bits. If you are actually following on here, you can just pause the video and try and copy if you want. Now I'm going with the paintbrush. This is a very small liner. A liner has longer bristles which gives you smooth lines and I quite like it. Some people will go very fine lines and up to thick lines. I prefer to go the other way. I like to mark out the thick bold lines and then just get finer and finer. So I'm going to look for all the major lines here because I like the smooth lines of the paintbrush, I usually try and put in as many lines as I possibly can. Because when you use nibs, you can tend to be a little bit too fine, a little bit too detailed, 
and so the paintbrush is good because it uh, forces you to be a bit more freer with your artwork. And having these bold lines there, they still so show out by the end of the drawing as well. The other thing about the line, if you see me do that first crest there, you see the thick and thin? And then this line here, see how it goes from thick to thin? And that's one of the nice, beautiful things about paintbrushes. They give you beautiful lines. Next, I'm using an old-fashioned nib pen. Again, with a nib pen, gives you just a really nice, crisp line. You can use other fine pens. But I suggest that you use some kind of paintbrush and a fine pen combination, rather than just use all fine pen. It's good to make variations of line in the one drawing. I do sometimes just do a complete pen drawing, but then when I do that, I usually use two different size nibs as well. So again, I'll just speed up this bit here because it could get a bit boring. Again, if you want to follow along, if you're actually drawing this along with me, well, you'd probably want to pause this and catch up. But otherwise, you know, I assume that a lot of people are watching this just because they're getting handy hints. Okay, here where I've done the cross hatching, I'm going over it, but you see what I'm doing is I'm not just going over it with a cross hatch, I'm sort of marking in the scales. Where the cross hatch makes a sort of a, a squarish shape, I tend to go over that freehand with a scale rather than running it all the way through. I will do it in some parts, but this makes it more scale like. Like I said before, this is just a variation on the brick technique that I use when I draw snakes sometimes. I'll draw down a brick wall and then replace each brick with a scale. This way I'm doing a cross hatch and I am using intersecting lines as a scale. Here I'm sort of doing a bit of the brick wall stuff. It's a sort of freehand because I haven't marked down the brick wall first, but what you can do is draw down a little brick wall if you want. Then replace each brick with a scale. This little section here, again the brick wall technique, but I'm making it much smaller. As I make it smaller, it makes a darker area. One of the things that make lizards really interesting is the range of different scales they have over their bodies. Whereas snakes, most of their bodies pretty much a uniform type of scale. Lizards can be so varied. Snakes can be fairly varied in the face, but not as much as a lizard like this. Lizards have so much variation between big scales and then small scales. They seem to have larger scales on their flatter areas, but the areas that move around a lot or have to flex or bend tend to be much smaller scales. Again, I'll speed up this bit with the drawing of the scales because it would be probably a bit boring. I just tend to zone out when I do this anyway. So I'm cross-hatching a few bits which are small bits which are not that important because it still does give a bit of a scaly look to it. Because the cross-hatching works to describe scales if you don't do it over the whole body. So by doing that it looks a bit scaly but it's got lots of white areas on there. So I certainly wouldn't cross-hatch the whole thing. Even though this is highly detailed and it's got lots of detail over the whole drawing, still you know, it's still important to leave lighter areas and darker areas. I've now switched to a much finer nib. I am now stippling around the eye. It's great to be able to get these small nibs. For a while there I was really struggling to find any sort of drawing nibs whatsoever. But luckily, because of the whole manga anime uh, popularity at the moment, 
there are sites out there that will sell you art supplies to draw comics with and so nibs and Letratone and stuff like that's all coming back. The small nib's very good for putting in fine detail. I love this nib because whereas I find mapping pen nibs a little bit too fine, this nib's just lovely for putting in lovely small detail. I may not be the biggest anime fan. I certainly don't mind anime. I watch it from time to time. Or manga. And I've always sort of liked the style. I've liked probably DC Marvel style more though. But I am a fan of the tools they use. It's great. Brilliant nib that I've got here. I might even drop in the description box down below. I'll put a link to where I got this from. Should also point out I'm not being paid to promote these guys. I'm just so yeah, this is the tools I use, I'm just letting you know what I'm using. Also notice with the shading that I'm doing here, I'm not really cross hatching, but I am leaving a little bit of white on each scale as highlights. Again, very important to leave the light bits. Here's some of the famous little circles again, little ovals, little lines, just to sort of try to blend that cross hatching in to the crest there. I'm not going to put random little lines here and there, make it look gnarly. I'm trying to build up a tone here underneath the jaws and the mouth of the lizard. Uh, the underside of the head's going to be in shade. And also where I've got the big, bold, almost cartoony lines of the paintbrush to darken around those edges, soften those in, makes it blend in a little bit more. But as you can see, you can still see those bold lines there, which I'm quite happy with. You know, it's dinosaurs that inspired me to love lizards. And this lizard inspires me to love dinosaurs back again. So I think soon I'm going to have to do a few more dinosaur drawings because I just love dinosaur drawings. What is there not to love about dinosaurs? It's also very dragon-like too. I might have another crack at doing some dragon drawings as well, some fantasy dragons. Because they're just cool. Now all that's left is for me to rub out the pencil lines. And I have my nice black and white drawing of a basilisk lizard. If this is being helpful, I'd love to hear from you guys. Drop a comment down below as to how helpful this is or not. And if you've got any questions, please ask questions. I hope you guys enjoyed that how to draw the basilisk lizard. I know you guys love wildlife and thanks for supporting this channel. I just hope that you can get something out of this how to draw video that's going to increase your skills so you can communicate your love of wildlife in a creative way. Till next time, maybe check out some of these other videos. I'll see you later.